Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, last time we were together, we talked about latitude and longitude and how these can be used to find location. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about different types of maps. We're going to cover a wide variety of maps, all the way from the first things that human beings use to get an idea of objects on the surface of the Earth to modern technology that you guys probably use in your lives every day. Let's jump right in. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the globe. This is the first thing that people use to get an idea of the shape of the land and the sea. Uh, the globe is a great model of the Earth because it's three-dimensional. It's roughly the shape of the Earth itself. It's not quite a sphere, but it's, it's close enough that most people can't tell the difference. Uh, what this means is it shows the size and shapes of everything on the Earth with basically no distortion. If you look at a globe and measure how wide Florida is and compare that to how wide Texas is, those proportions are accurate to what they really are on the Earth. Um, direction is also accurate. Uh, if you were facing north in Mexico and looked to your left, you would see Florida. Uh, now, a downside of these is that you can't see really small detail because a globe shows the entire Earth. You can't just have a part of a globe. You've got to have the whole thing for it to work. You're not going to be able to see detail uh, like even of a single state. Um, making a globe where you could easily see detail of the entire state, the entire globe would have to be hundreds of feet across. In addition to that, they're not really easy to carry around. A big old globe is not a convenient thing to have in your pocket even before phones were a thing. I know, I know, we're all just gonna use our phone for everything nowadays. That's okay, I promise we'll get there later in the lecture. Now, something that would be much easier to carry in your pocket is the next type of map we're gonna look at. This is the Mercator projection. This is a classic map that most people see when they look at a map of the Earth, and in fact, most maps you look at today are Merc Mercator projection. The important thing here with the Mercator projection is that the lines of latitude and longitude are shown as parallel lines. Remember, while latitude is parallel on the globe, longitude comes together at the poles and is furthest apart at the equator. So there is a little bit of distortion going on to get those lines to appear parallel on the Mercator projection. Now, one thing that is accurate is directions. If you are standing in a spot and you use a compass to figure out which direction on the map you're pointing, left on the map is left in real life. Right on the map is right in real life. So directions are shown accurately, and this makes them very useful for people who are trying to find their way around, whether you're a sailor or a hiker. Uh, size and shape is very distorted on the Mercator projection. As I said, the further away you get from the center of the map, the more things are distorted. If you look at the picture here, Antarctica, that big white mass at the bottom, is definitely not as big as all the other continents put together. Greenland, that white mass at the top, is not at the size of Africa. Uh, there's a link to a video on this slide that'll do a better job with some animations of showing what I mean by size and shape are, not dis are distorted and mostly at the edges. So take a look at that link if you want a little bit more information. Next type of map we're gonna look at is a contour map. So the thing about a contour map is that we have all these lines on here that are not lines of latitude or longitude, they are something else. And the reason we have these on a contour map is they show the three dimensional features in an area. Now those lines are called contour lines and they show elevation. Every point on a given contour line is the same elevation. Let's see if I can get my laser pointer up here and show you what I mean. So everything along this line is at the same height. If you were walking perfectly along that line in real life, you would be walking flat, even though you would be walking on the side of a hill. Uh, contour lines can indicate things, like how close they are tells us how steep a slope is. This part in the middle here, where we don't really have any contour lines, that's really, really flat. This part where the contour lines are so close together that it's hard to see them, this is really, really steep. This is basically a cliff. And then up here, it's not quite as steep, but definitely steeper than in the middle. 
So the contour lines can indicate how steep something is in addition to the shape of features around. Now, to make contour lines easier to read, you generally have a contour interval. This means that the distance between lines is always the same difference in elevation. So we've got these bold lines that are a set elevation from each other, and each of these uh, harder to see, more faint lines would also be a set elevation from each other. Contour maps are really useful if you're trying to navigate, if you're trying to get around, but they usually only show a small area at a time so that they can avoid distortion. Next, we're going to look at an even more specialized type of map called a geologic map. So these are used to display the type and the age of rock exposed at the surface. Here we have a map of England, and we have the ages of different rocks present. You can use the color and this key to determine types of rocks, whether they are sedimentary, metamorphic, or igneous, and for our igneous rocks, how old they are. Now these different types of rocks are something we're going to learn about later, so that'll help make more sense. And these ages, different geologic periods of Earth, is something we're going to be covering towards the end of the year. So this will make even more sense when we learn about this stuff. This is a map that's got a lot of information on it, but it's really specific and specialized, and most people might not need it. Only someone who needs to know what might be under the surface for some reason, like mining or extracting oil, uh, would probably care about a geologic map. The last thing we're going to talk about today is making this more relevant to our everyday lives. We're going to learn about maps and advanced technology. Most of you aren't walking around with a paper map in your pocket. You're walking around with a cell phone in your pocket, just like we see here in this picture. So mapping is now primarily done electronically, whether it's on your phone, on some sort of a handheld dedicated device used for mapping, uh, or even on your computer. Most electronic maps use Mercator projections, that first type of paper map we learned about to display things on a flat surface like a phone or a computer screen. But they get away from the issue with distortion by only sm showing you a small map at a time, exactly what you want to see. And every time you move that map around, they recalculate it. So the center is always nice and crisp, and it reduces distortion at the edges as much as possible. Your phones also have a nifty feature that you may or may not use. When you get older, you'll use it a lot if you don't already, and that's a global positioning system or GPS. This is the technology that allows your phone to know your exact location. And the way it does this is using satellites. So orbiting the Earth as part of this global positioning system or GPS, there are hundreds of satellites that orbit above a known spot on Earth. And there are actually uh, stations on Earth that use satellite dishes and radio telescopes to make sure that those satellites are exactly where they're supposed to be. Now your phone has a receiver and it uses the distance from at least four different satellites, comparing that distance to the known location of those satellites to determine exactly where your phone is. And then it just projects that location on whatever map you're looking at at the time. That's how GPS works. So today we've gone over everything from the most basic type of map, the globe, to now fitting an entire, every single map you could want in your pocket and knowing exactly where you are at the same time. And what we will see uh, is that different types of maps have different advantages and different disadvantages, and you might want to use a different one depending on your situation.